Agriculture on the move. 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 Good day again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. With me today is the former Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. He is also the former PS for uh, the Foreign Affairs. He is also former Ambassador, St. Lucia Ambassador to Taiwan, and presently he is the Chairman and Managing Director of uh, the Paradise Foods St. Lucia. Welcome to the program, Mr. Emmanuel, Hubert Emmanuel. Thank you, good morning. Mr. Emmanuel, when you were PS of the Ministry of Agriculture, um, under your watch, together with Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, who was then Minister Responsible for Agriculture, and also the, the Parliamentary Rep for Babono, he saw it fit to, to look into um, the number of fruits that were going to waste. Mm -hmm. And he figured that, look, there needs to be an agro-processing plant um, to harness the amount of fruits that, that, uh, that were being lost. Mm -hmm. And um, that came to fruition. Give us an uh, insight into that time while you were in the, the PS in agriculture. Well, yes, it happened back in the 2007, 2008, around that time, 2008 mm -hmm. specifically when I first joined the ministry and um, the minister and I had a discussion mm -hmm. talking about um, value added. Right. We realized that um, uh, we were basically doing a lot of primary products mm -hmm. and selling our, our primary agriculture and exporting these things. Mm -hmm. But uh, because of defects and other requirements of the market, a lot of uh, our, our products were going to waste because the market required such a, a standard. But th there's nothing wrong with the fruit mm -hmm. or, the, or the product for that matter. However, just um, the, the, because of little defects on the outside. So um, Minister and I decided that um, we need to look at definitely going into value added. Mm -hmm. And so approaches were made to the government of Taiwan mm -hmm. for assistance in terms of um, construction of um, a facility. And there was the old Faso um, boxing plant which uh, look ideal as an ideal location for agro-processing. And uh, with that in mind, um, we approached the Taiwanese government for some funding. Mm -hmm. There was also one of the projects funded by the FAO. Yeah. And FAO also assisted, and with the assistance of AICA also, the, these two agencies assisted in terms of training, in terms of equipment. We got all of the equipment for mm -hmm. the facility mm -hmm. at the time from FAO. But the, the plan really was to add value to agriculture. We, we, are, we are producing uh, some good products, but yet still we're exporting these things and then we are re-importing them back into St. Lucia mm -hmm. at much higher prices. Okay. And we believe that um, um, there, were, there were two effects, of two or three. One, it would, it would give farmers additional revenue stream. Mm -hmm. Two, it would create employment in the area. And also it would, it would give St. Lucia more capacity to, to start to manufacture their own um, foods and, uh, and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. So that was, the, that was the, the essence of what, was, what the thinking was at the time. Mm -hmm. And so we constructed this, this, this uh, building and um, commenced some, some agro-processing, mm -hmm. inclusive of dashings and yams to, do, to be vacuum packed. Great. And that, mm -hmm. I, th I think that went well. Yes. Um, I think um, the market was there and he's still there. Yeah. And uh, I suppose with that in mind, uh, you went to Taiwan as mm -hmm. Ambassador St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. And then uh, how that idea came up with you being in Taiwan as Ambassador and getting to where you are today? Yeah. Well, I must tell you, when I get to Taiwan as Ambassador, I, I kept myself very busy. Okay. Uh, every weekend I was away from the office, but I went to different cities and towns in Taiwan. Okay. Let's explore to see what is it that Taiwan is doing that they are mm. so successful. Okay. Um, Taiwan, like St. Lucia, was agriculture based. The economy was agriculture based, mm -hmm. but they have turned it into one that is heavily industrialized and, um, and, and they start, first started with agro-processing. Mm -hmm. And they've done extremely well with that. And so farmers in Taiwan benefit from every aspect of a product. The product is, is, is being um, harvested, the primary products, the, the best, the A-class ones, mm -hmm. goes to the supermarkets and other places 
to be consumed, but then they add value to everything else. Okay. Everything is being used, utilized. So it gives additional revenue stream. Nothing goes to waste in Taiwan. Okay. It creates jobs and everything. So, so in going around Taiwan, I realized in every city, every town, there's a different thing happening. Mm. Um, where it's, it's a lot of rice being grown there, but they have bananas, they do mango, they do all of these fruits, pineapple. And so they have gone into value added with, with these things. And so in my discussions with um, some of the, the factory owners and things of that sort, um, they asked me, they said to me, what is it that St. Lucia has? I said, well, we have bananas, we have plenty of mangoes, mm -hmm. we have plenty of, we have cocoa, we have one of the best mm -hmm. um, um, varieties of cocoa in the world, Correct. you know, among the top five in fine the world. Fine flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine flavor. And so uh, they said, so, I, 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 and then they, they said to me, but you could do a lot with that, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. I, well, they said, well, how much can you produce? You know, I tell them, not huge numbers, but... We have sufficient in terms of mango, mm -hmm. for sure, and other fresh fruits to make juices and things of that sort. And um, we're importing everything that we, we consume right now. And so the idea came up. They said to me, well, uh, we could assist you in, you know, in, in moving to that, 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 um, that next step you know, mm -hmm. of, of, of value added. At the time, I never saw myself going into it directly. Okay. But rather, I, I was trying, I liaised with the Manufacturers Association, the Small Business Association, trying to see if we could get somebody to go into this, mm -hmm. you know. A kind of a joint venture and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that Taiwanese taught me they said you know instead of letting somebody come over to the stick over uh, joint venture is the best thing okay. with a joint venture your people benefit uh, you get the, tra the, the transfer of technology and you know um, mm -hmm. and, and, and all so your people mm -hmm. are shareholders mm -hmm. not merely workers, workers. Yes, yes, and, and, yes, and one yes. of the concepts they taught me in Taiwan is that um, to create wealth you have to do two things you have to create either a product or service. Uh, they said if you uh, just buy and sell, you don't make no money mm -hmm. and you, you're not getting the benefit of the technology transfer. Mm -hmm. So you have to create a product or create a well okay. or, cre or create a, a, a service. Okay. And so that prompt, prompted me when I couldn't get somebody uh, down here who were willing to take up that challenge. I worked with several persons, but I couldn't get nobody who wanted to take it up seriously. Mm -hmm. And so I, the idea came up that when my stint is over, that I should probably look at it myself to go into it because it's something I was I'd always I always had a liking for. Okay. From the time I was in agriculture, I spent lots of time at the agro-processing facility myself. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I, that's where I wanted to head with this thing. Okay. Yeah. So from there, you came back. Yes. And what was the next move? Well, I still, even before I came back, um, you know, on my way back, I knew I was supposed to be back here in October. My, my, my contract would have ended in October. So I did apply to, I spoke to Minister Ezekiel Joseph. I mm -hmm. tell him my, my own plans. Mm -hmm. um, and I told him that um, we, we, we heard that the government would be willing to list the place to us. Mm -hmm. yeah? I, and um, what we did also, I got together with, um, there, there are seven other St. Lucians. In fact, eight, or eight St. Lucians and one Taiwanese businessman mm -hmm. who, are, who, are, um, who owns that company, Paradise Foods Limited. Okay. So we made an approach um, to government to list that place for us. And I must say the minister supported, he graciously agreed, and he took it to cabinet. Cabinet agreed to list the place to us under all the conditions. Mm -hmm. And so we began to put um, th matters together in terms of our equipment, what is it that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, we start to put out the groundwork as to what we, we, we will be doing at Fongaso. Okay. Yep. Okay, we are due for our first break. When you come back, we will continue the discussion. Mm -hmm. You're watching Agriculture No Move. Stay tuned. <laughs> Pour contrôler les maladies si vous avez il est nécessaire et bien important pour tenir tout équipement, particulièrement les machines spray en bonne condition. Toujours nettoyer les machines après vous servir et mettre en condition bon service, même quand les gens vous recommandent pour tenir. Depuis que vous avez servi chimique pour contrôler les maladies fixes si vous avez il est absolument important pour protéger le corps et prendre en chaque précaution. Operator, ces machines spray pour servir habillement qui est bien protégé. Servi overall, goggles, boots et gloves pour empêcher que les touche la peau et bien expirer. Pour plus d'informations à ce manière pour traiter et contrôler les maladies si vous avez un peu à ce plantation et bien jardin, vous avez téléphoné au département pour ménager si vous avez un numéro 451-549. Et bien, 4 5 yon, 5 8 9 4 et bien, email yo à bpmu at candw.lc. 
Commission Sala a sorti Hod Ministère de l'Agriculture, ensemble avec Fonds Coopération Internationale et Développement, Hod Pays République la Chine, Taïwan. Welcome back to the program. With me is Mr. Hubert Emmanuel, who is the Managing Director of Paradise Fruits, St. Lucia Limited. Um, Hubert, you were talking about now you have been established. Um, you have your, your staff in place, mm -hmm. you have equipment in place. Mm -hmm. um, where are you now as we speak? Okay, as we stand now, um, I was lucky enough um, to have absorbed all the staff of, um, of the government had up at Foisson, mm -hmm. and uh, that's part of the arrangement. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, these are people that I knew. Um, in fact, when I was PSA, we ha I hired most of them anyhow. Mm -hmm. And so they have a good background in, in food processing. Mm -hmm. You know, they, have, they've, we, they were extensively trained by FAO and other agencies. So as soon as we, we got our equipment in here late in 2017, early 2018, um, we began processing and um, testing some products. So okay. as it stands then now, we do not have all our equipment in place, but uh, we have sufficient equipment that we are able now to produce our first class, um, high quality, fresh juices. We are producing that right now. We began that sometime in, in late February and um, we are doing fresh juice daily. Okay. So that is ready to go out there. Okay. Um, it's been sold at some outlets already. Um, so that is there, that's one. Mm -hmm. As far as chocolates is concerned, we began testing chocolates in late December. We've done a number of, variety, a, a number of recipes and um, we, we pass them out to the consumers to, 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 to taste, you know, to see what is the best um, um, recipe that would be acceptable to most persons. Mm -hmm. And we also had our packaging materials brought in. We, we, we got these, most of them from Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And um, as it stands then now, we, uh, we are currently producing first class, high quality chocolates. Okay. We have about seven different varieties that are available on the market right now. Mm -hmm. um, as, and then as far as dry food is concerned, we have some of the equipment. We are not totally satisfied with the quality that we are getting now. So we have another piece of equipment that is coming to finish off the, that product. Mm -hmm. The our whole idea is for us to really to, uh, utilize the mango season this year to do a lot of the dry fruits, um, dry, dry mangoes, dry pineapples, and any other fruit that we have, dry bananas, um, so that uh, we could produce uh, a lot of these things from indigenous fruits down in St. Lucia. Okay. The whole idea, but, uh, Mr. Philip, is to, for us to um, utilize local products, mm -hmm. agricultural products, to create a new product that could be that could go out in the international market. Okay. The plan is for us to one selling the local market, two exports, exports for two ways, one um, direct exports to neighboring countries and the UK and these places, mm -hmm. but also um, every uh, but the tourists who come here. We are targeting heavily the tourism sector, and. Um, if you sell to somebody who's living the, uh, at the airport, that's ex export, mm -hmm, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so that's what we are trying to do, to fill in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. In the past, uh, I've traveled a lot, and people always talk about uh, there's not a good souvenir from St. Lucia. Okay. Uh, there's some good wood carving and things of that sort, but people want different kinds of souvenirs. And we believe souvenir foods are a good one, mm -hmm, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so that's where we are with that. So mm -hmm. as of today, we have juices that are available. We have... Um, um, the, the chocolates that are available mm -hmm. to be purchased. We have developed some new um, um, varieties of ice creams using fresh fruits again, including we are making a dashing ice cream. Yes, I was too. We so. made dashing ice cream, we made some soursop and mango, and mango ice cream is excellent. Mm. And the good thing about our products is that um, our ice cream in particular, no sugar is added to it. No yeah. sugar is added to our mango. We, we add sugar to some of the varieties because when you do a lime, ice cream yes, and, a yes, sour yes. and a things like tamarind, yes, you have to, but our mango and our soursop and things so have no sugar in it. It's just okay. very natural. Okay. The other um, foods, I remember the agro-processing plant were producing vacuum-packed mm -hmm. um, root crops. Mm -hmm. They were doing dashing, they were mm -hmm. doing yams and cassava and stuff like this. Are you going to venture in that area? Definitely so, definitely so. The next phase, we are looking at that. Mm -hmm. um, as it stands there now, the vacuum pack market in St. Lucia, it's seasonal. Okay. Um, when when dashing and yams are plentiful, people would prefer to buy the fresh ones. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's stay, uh, you know, you, you, you could only have it in the freezer for a certain period of time, maybe mm -hmm. six months and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it has not been too profitable for Foisson, but we believe 
um, overseas, we could get a good foreign market for these things. Mm -hmm. Where you know, places like the UK and, and places of that sort, the United States, and other places where it's, you know, these foods are perishable and mm -hmm. it's so transporting a dashing and yam in the primary stage, they're prone to diseases and, and, and spoilage mm -hmm. is very mm -hmm. high also. Mm -hmm. If we have a vacuum pack, we believe we could create a, a better market out there. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at that. We're going to try to establish the markets in the UK. Um, I'll be in the UK in July and hopefully we could establish some markets. It's okay. something uh, we have had discussions with Windfresh on that before when I was PS. Mm -hmm. I believe it's something that should have been taken up at mm -hmm. the next level. Mm -hmm. And so in a private capacity now as Paradise Foods, we are going to look into that to do okay. some vacuum packing of these foods. So you'll find that um, we could take, you know, not just the primary good looking dashing, but the ones that, you know, doesn't look good for the local supermarket. We could take it, you cut it up, and then you still have good dashing, mm -hmm. good yams, mm -hmm. and yet still you could vacuum pack them and send them away. Yes, so okay. we're looking at some of these. The cassava uh, production in St. Lucia, we, as you know, that's one of the priorities mm -hmm. on, the, on the ministry's list. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of processing, mm -hmm. I know for fresh um, vacuum pack that, that that has gone well. Yeah. Um, we did a, we did a couple of with Massey and that went very well. Um, we are also looking at other mm -hmm. products coming from cassava. Are you going to be venturing that area also? Definitely. So we are looking at. We will be doing what is called a, a chocolate cassava cake. Wow. It's something uh, similar to a fig roll, the okay. fig roll, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you have figs on the inside and you have a pastry on the outside. Mm -hmm. We are looking at that because cassava is a much better uh, uh, flower, you know? The yes, it is. Uh, yeah. it is. It's, it's much better, healthier mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. of wheat and these others. Correct. So, so we are looking at that. And, and people are also, people like exotic things. And cassava is not something that's common all over the place. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at that to, uh, our, that's one of the things we'll be doing. Okay. A cassava chocolate cake. Oh, okay. So you put chocolate on the inside and cassava on the outside. It's just like a fig roll, mm -hmm. individually wrapped. And you know, you package it into a box and then you know, Box of six, box of eight, whatever right, the case right, may be. Right, right. So yes, that is one of the things we've been doing. Very so good. we are working. We are we are working closely with the ministry. We know that uh, most of the equipments for cassava grinding were, mm -hmm. were, were, were given through the EU's FDS, program yes, and FAO, FAO, right. FAO and the EU. Mm -hmm. So these things are there. I think initially it was supposed to have been taking place at Foraso, mm -hmm. but because of space constraints, mm -hmm. I think the ministry have now taken the decision that it will be done at Angers. Angers yes. And in fact, most, a lot of the cassava the farmers are down in the south anyhow. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we will be purchasing a lot of these products from them mm -hmm. and adding value to it to okay. make something very good, you know, okay. so that you could sell to your, the million tourists who comes here, if everybody, if 10% uh, of them would buy a box, that's going to be good for the economy. Great. And, and, and that's just the first phase. We are hoping to go out with it also. Export. What arrangements you have with purchasing um, from the farmers? Uh, are you going to be sensitizing them, have a little you know, meetings with them and to tell them exactly what you want and what quantities you want them and what, at what time you want them? Yes. Well, that is important. That's a good question that you asked there because, yes, we have been working closely with some of the extension regions, okay. the ones closer to our area. but. Mm -hmm. We also work closely with the marketing board, mm -hmm. and every Tuesday, our, some of our officers goes down with the marketing board to right. Angers. Mm -hmm. the Angers. Marketing board goes down to the south in Angers yes, every, yes, every yes, Tuesday to purchase, to, purchase um, to collect goods and things like that. So we have an arrangement whereby um, our officers will go down along with them, and also we've been in touch with, with the purchasing officer of marketing board mm -hmm. that um, sometimes if we cannot go, but they have stuff to be purchased, they'll, they will take it on our behalf, okay. and you know we'll make that arrangement. Okay. So we'll be working very closely with the, uh, with the marketing board on this issue. Mm -hmm. But the plan is really, we will, make, we will not be going out to purchase all over the place, but rather I have had discussions with a group of young people um, to, to create employment, mm. to tell two, three of them, in fact, I'm meeting for a group tomorrow again, to tell two, three young men, let's say in the millet area, you come together, we tell you what is it that we need, the, the, the requirements, the qualities and things of that sort, mm -hmm. and you start a new business. Right. But you will be our purchaser in the millet roso area. Mm -hmm. We call you, you call the office and say, how, how much mango you want this today? How, you know, or what, is, what are the needs? Right. And then they go, they buy it from mm -hmm. the farmers, and most times, I'll tell you the next thing too, a farmer may have two guava trees and will not just, you know, spend time going and look for mm -hmm, the guava. Mm -hmm. But two or three young men going in a region mm -hmm. could go and buy a lot of guava. Mm -hmm. A mm -hmm. lot of guava from everybody, pay them off, and then they make a profit. They that's buy right. that at 50 cents, they sell it to us at 65 cents, and they make some money. Very good. So that's part of the program. Good. Yeah. You do for another break, stay tuned. Yeah. yeah.
When you're out at sea, there are no service stations along the way or supermarkets for a quick stop if you need something. It is essential that everything you will need while at sea is on the boat before you leave. That's why pre-sea checks are so important. Checks should be carried out by more than one person to ensure that all essentials are on board. Everything on board? Yeah, everything on board. Still on board? Yeah, port with that same boy. Pre-sea checks should include food stores, extra water and fuel, navigational equipment, safety gear and communication yep. equipment. Okay, light out, sir. That's what I'm doing. Before heading out to sea, always ensure that all equipment is in working order, you are stocked up on food and also extra fuel. Call the lighthouse to inform them of your voyage plan and inform someone responsible of your departure time and estimated time of arrival back on shore. For more information on obtaining a license to fish, contact the Department of Fisheries at 468-4143. Welcome back. Mr. Emmanuel, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, you know, you have engaged young persons in the various communities mm -hmm. so that they can go and purchase. Because sometimes you have um, somebody in Capen State to have a, 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 a huge, say, a seaweed tree mm -hmm. or a gover tree, you know, and, and they cannot consume all at home. But of course, if there's somebody who would come in and say, mm -hmm. like in the old days, I'm, go I'm buying the tree from you, mm -hmm. and then I have a snare cell. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what sort of arrangements can you continue with this? Well, yes, as I said, I said before, we were, pr we were looking for young men in different regions mm -hmm. who would like to go. We, 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 we want to train them as to what to do mm -hmm. in terms of the quality of the fruit, to know when the fruit is mature right. and, and, and how to handle the fruit. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's the kind of arrangement we want to do is for them to organize two free young men, mm -hmm. try to get them uh, transport, especially do so those who may have a transport mm -hmm. and you know they could go out there to cap estate yeah, if somebody may have a, a tamarind tree in cap yeah, estate there are exactly. lots of tamarind a trees lot of yes. and yes. The, the owners will not climb it mm -hmm. just stay and rut but mm -hmm. these young men could go uh, purchase the tree when mm -hmm. i say purchase the yeah, tree purchase yeah. the fruit the fruit yes. they say i give you a hundred dollars or i give you and i'm harvesting it, mm -hmm. I'm harvesting it yes. and then they come back and sell it to us we mm -hmm. give them our buying price mm -hmm. right and so they could now go to the different farmers and, and say, negotiate, negotiate to the farmers and say look mm -hmm. this is going to go to waste mm -hmm. so we're going to pick it ourselves that's because right. the problem with most persons they will not pick it that's right a lady may have a mango tree there and they would have mango in it but it all will fall because exactly. they're not climb right exactly so we try to arrange groups of young people in each region very good already we have a group um uh, working in the uh, in the millet area, mm -hmm. we're just organizing them right now. We're looking up. Um, I'll be in the Mabuya Valley, Region Three, mm -hmm. Region uh, Region Three. three yes. yeah. So to go there, then Angers, we, we want to be Region Four. Go mm -hmm. to all the regions. Good. Uh, um, two weeks ago, I met with a group of young men in the Viewfort area, mm -hmm. and in fact, um, we have been on the phone. I'm trying to arrange for that the, that they could arrange to cover Viewfort Chuzel area. Okay. It's a little distance for us, and um, but they would go. We'd tell them what is it that we need. They go, they purchase it from the farmers. Mm -hmm. We just have to make sure we put a system in place that the farmers have been paid. I'm very concerned about that. Right, right, right. And uh, we want the names of every farmer for yes, traceability. The yes, we want yes, the names yeah. and the regions from which every farmer is coming out. Mm -hmm. And um, so that um, we could know who our farmers are. We right. want to be in touch with our farmers, although mm -hmm. we will not be doing all the purchases directly, mm -hmm. but we want to know who of our course, farmers of course, are. Of course, of course. Yeah? Of course very so important. we arrange we the young men, they go, and it's creating employment. Mm -hmm. It's creating employment. Mm -hmm. You could have a lot of people involved in that. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment now, I must tell you, we will buy every gover we could find, wow. every passion fruit, every tamarind, every cherry. We'll buy every golden apple. We cannot buy every mango for the time being. Mm -hmm, the mangoes mm -hmm. are plentiful, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully one of these days I could say we'll buy all the mangoes. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. what we do, we pulp these, 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 these mangoes, when mm -hmm. the, the, the fresh fruits. Mm -hmm. When they come in first, we pulp it. And it could remain in the freezer for a year or two as fresh. Okay. Because it's pulped. All right. Yeah? You are diversifying too, because I, I heard you mention that you are in the Faso area mm -hmm. and there are other collaborants. Mm -hmm. um, what, are the, what projects did you have at the way forward? Well, yes, um, we, we are looking at a, a number of other areas for us to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to go, apart from, apart from being in us on producing these products and mm -hmm. things of like that sort, mm -hmm. we are going to go into agro-tourism also. Right. Agro-tourism, whereby we are going to have tours to, to the, the facility. facility. In fact, mm -hmm. when I leave here today, I'm, I'm going down, I'm meeting some tour operators mm -hmm. today, where people will be coming into, um, um, from the cruise ships, from the hotels and things of like that sort, we'll have people coming into um, for us all. 
and we are working along with a number of farms in the area. So Great. far, we have four farms, and uh, we're going to give uh, you a total package tour. Okay. Um, from the cruise ship or from the hotel, you go straight to the farm, where we'll be having um, our tour guides on the farm, trained tour guides on the farm. They would be there to give you the whole history of the different plants and you know all the all the information that's relevant information. Okay. For instance, a cocoa tree, we will show you um, a cocoa bean, mm -hmm. show you a seedling, a young a young tree, mm -hmm. uh, a fruit bearing tree, and give you the information as to what is happening in terms of how long it takes for a tree to bear, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. how um, uh, when it's peak. You know, normally cocoa tree pick between year year eight and year mm -hmm. twelve mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. to pick around that time. Mm -hmm. The cycles of the production and right. everything. So. From and, and not just cook or a number of the other trees. trees. Yes. From yeah. there, um, the, the visitor would come to the factory mm -hmm. and they would observe the processing of cocoa through a big glass panel. Mm -hmm. And then from there, uh, we put them into a demonstration room mm -hmm. where we give them more information and they, we, they sample everything mm -hmm. that we produce mm -hmm. from the ice cream to the juices to the f uh, dry fruits to mango chips and, and, and things of that sort and to the chocolates. We and then you mark it. <laughs> and then we market. <laughs> yes, but we, we do not end there. Uh -huh. uh, at the end of every tour, um, maybe based on how the tours are, we are having a, we are having a cultural show, right. a daily show. Yes, yes, it's called yes. a daily show. Good. And the daily show, f um, it, it centers around agriculture's contribution to the economy over the years. Okay. From the time of sugarcane, mm -hmm. and that will be done in the form of dance and drama. History. From the time of sugarcane mm -hmm. into what it is now, a mixture of tourism and agriculture. Great, great. Uh, yeah, so we're having a daily show. So. It not only it's going to benefit uh, the agricultural sector and the commercial sector, but tourism. We, we are given a new product. Very and good. so far, most of the tour operators, they are fascinated by our plans. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know recently you, ha you had this synergy with, with um, the primary school, the Fonsa Primary School. Yes. Uh, tell, tell us about that. That's, uh, that's oh, very yes. exciting. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we figure out to be a good corporate citizen. Uh, we are operating from the Fonsa area. Mm -hmm. And so I approached the district rep and said, look, we, we want to be known as the kind of company who helps people. Mm -hmm. And so we, we decided, I decided that we want to help with a school mm -hmm. you know, to, to help the, give them our, our products. And we, we, and we chose, after consultation, we chose Fon mm -hmm. Uh We adopted Fon Asso as our partners in, in, in that whole venture. Mm -hmm. And so we are giving them weekly, we are giving them juices weekly. Once a week, we're giving them fresh juice. Mm -hmm. You know, that is our donation, you know, our contribution to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also ice creams, mm -hmm. healthy ice cream. Mm -hmm. What we want to inculcate in the minds of the young people is that local is as good as anything else. Right. In fact, local is better. Right. Just right. We're giving them fresh juices. And so far, the young people are really embracing it. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. packaging is, attra is attractive, but the quality of the juice is very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with our problem of hypertension and diabetes, we yeah, believe that's the way yes, to yes, start. Yeah. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. It's a pity I, I didn't tell you to bring in uh, some samples. Yes, I should Yeah, have. you should have. I thought I should, you should have. I should have. <laughs> have. Yeah, at least to show the public in exactly yes. what's up. Yes. But, but people, I mean, I've seen the packaging. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, feel free. You can go up to mm -hmm. Fawaso, so mm -hmm. go on a tour, and I'm sure Mr. Emmanuel will take you on a tour. Mm -hmm. Any final words from you, sir? Well, I just want to say to St. Lucia that uh, we, are the, the, uh, we are doing it to a venture which is going to benefit St. Lucia on a whole, but mm -hmm. that depends on people utilizing the products. Mm -hmm. And um, initially, the products may appear to be a little expensive, but the more we get utilization, the f lower the cost is, the cost is going to drop. Right. And it's a matter of health, too. Yes. Um, you yeah. may save a penny today, but you'll spend a lot of money tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be... Um, um, pong wise and penny foolish. Yes, Is that yes. the way you mm -hmm. always say people are penny wise <laughs> and pong foolish? <laughs> so, by eating the fresh yeah. and, and a better product today, yeah. uh, tomorrow you'll save a lot of money on mm -hmm. diabetes mm -hmm. and hypertension mm -hmm. and things of that sort. Yeah. And so, we are saying every time we, we, we um, people consume our, our um, products, they're helping the economy by helping the farmers in the, to get, you know, who get new revenue st stream. Mm -hmm. They're helping foreign exchange, save w foreign exchange. Right. They're also helping crea job creation. Correct. Right now we have employed 20, 23 staff and the plan is for us to go for another 27 okay. uh, for, for the first phase of the program. Thank you very much, Mr. Emmanuel. I'm hoping that everything will go well with you. And of Thank course, you. I hope the economy in Lucia will boost. Thank okay, you. Because we, we're looking at what you call um, to bring down our food import bill. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. You have been watching agriculture to move thank you for viewing the program i'm philip sydney saying goodbye and see you again yeah yeah man I, 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 I agriculture on the move 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 agriculture on the move